Uh, <laughs> we had a snafu with not hitting the red button earlier, but now we hit the red button. Uh, let's uh, let's back up just a bit and introduce David Needham for the purpose of the recording. It's uh, hello, people in the future. I am <laughs> David Needham uh, from Enjoy Creativity and Triplo, <laughs> and uh, I'm I'm Les Lim. I'm from Ten Seven in Minneapolis. And uh, so, uh, one of the reasons why, why I'm excited about Drupal is not just uh, uh, for, the, for the technology, but I, I stay in the community because of the community. And uh, a quick plug-in for Twin Cities Drupal Camp. We have a great Drupal Camp that's always in the summertime. Uh, this year it's June 22nd, 25. We have great parties, uh, as well as stellar content as well. And I hope to see you all there. If you're interested, uh, you can talk to, to either one of us. We're, we're both involved. Um, so I feel like a really good way to introduce paragraphs is to set up a scenario. Um, let's say you are a content creator. You want to do something like, I have a basic page and I want to set up two columns of content. You know, I want to have an image, some sort of a heading and some text right next to each other. How can you do that? What are some ways you can do that? Well, one way is just to put it in the body field. If you know the code, you can just write in the code, you can put some inline style sheets, you can you know, put the images in there and you got that. And it, and it works. It comes out looking how you'd expect it to work. But you really should not put a bunch of code like this in the body field. And in this case, it, it, this is a, referred to as a blob. Uh, it's something that's very difficult for people to use and maintain. So how many people are familiar with the movie The Blob or The Monster The Blob? <laughs> that's, a fairly, that's a fairly good representation. The blob, uh, the blob is a space amoeba that consumes uh, things and people as it moves around. Uh, the, it's a horror movie. The blob's a horror monster, mostly because the things that it consumes become indistinct from the blob. The blob consumes. The blob uh, is what it is. It cannot be tamed. It can only be sort of controlled and destroyed. Uh, not even destroyed. It can be, it can be tamed with cold. And, uh, and, and it cannot be controlled, much in the same way as the body field. It's, uh, what I'm telling you is that your body field is a horror monster. <laughs> the code that you put in the body field may work well in one scenario, but when you try to condense it for mobile screens, or when you try to get uh, some sort of structure to it, it's impossible, because it's an amorphous mass of things consumed. If you think that this is a tortured metaphor, it's not mine. It's uh, actually Karen McGrain's metaphor. She's uh, a well-known content strategist, and she gave a talk at uh, DrupalCon, I think in 2012, where she talks about the difference between blobs and chunks. So if you want to Google blobs versus chunks, you'll hear a lot of, uh, you'll get a lot of different uh, hits about that. The, uh, the alternative to blobs that we are looking for is chunks. Uh, uh, so chunks, as opposed to blobs, <laughs> chunks are structured uh, bits of content that retain some in, in independence of, of and knowledge of itself so that it doesn't succumb to the oneness of the blob. Chunks of content you can order into different configurations. Chunks of content retain its own behaviors as to whether or not they respond uh, to, uh, to, to mobile styles or, or to desktop or very large styles. Chunks are the future that we are trying to achieve. And so in Drupal we have a couple different uh, chunk strategies. Uh, so the first yeah, so the first one here is the, the old standard, and, and if you were a themer in Drupal 6 especially, or Drupal 5, this was your life. You would spend all of your time creating tons and tons of fields, and then using templates to style the fields in different arrangements, with different markup, with different conditions. Uh, so you would end up with dozens and dozens of various template files to control every sort of scenario of what it's going to look like uh, if it's an article or a page or who knows whatever else. Um, so I mean, a positive is it's extremely flexible. You have full control over all of the markup, so you can make it do literally whatever you want it to do. But it becomes really difficult to change, particularly if you are not a coder. Uh, if you are a front end, or I'm, I'm sorry, like a, a content creator, you probably don't have access to your Git repository. You don't have access to like go into the theme and actually start changing these templates. And if you don't know PHP, you really can't create or make significant changes to them anyway. So it becomes really difficult for people um, to just kind of jump in and make a quick change and, and see what happens. Uh, and one strategy that I really liked uh, after this was using a module called Display Suite. Uh, Display Suite allows you to, within the UI, define different arrangements and layouts and different styles for all the various fields you have on your site. So you still have to add a bunch of fields to your content type, and then you would go into the Display Suite, 
uh, manage displays, move them around, change the styles and stuff like that. So it's great because it's, it's more approachable. There's an interface for it, you can jump in and make the change pretty easily. And there are reusable templates. So once you create a template for one content type or one display, you can use it all over the site. But um, you, know, you don't really need custom code, but you still have to do a little bit of custom code if you want custom templates or if you want to do something a little more you know, beyond that. And you still have a bunch of fields to manage, which, which gets to be complicated. So there's also panels. Um, you'll hear a lot about panels. I think there's a discussion going on right now, which um, thank you for coming here instead. Uh, <laughs> panels. Uh, I'm actually a big fan of panels. I love panels for, uh, especially for page layouts and for things that, that seem very dashboardy. Um, one of the issues with panels is that there's a lot of, uh, of user interface. <clears throat> Uh, it can be fairly daunting for somebody who's getting into Drupal sort of new. Even for people who are um, Drupal veterans, the panel's UI is kind of its own separate thing uh, that, uh, that doesn't reuse a lot of the same sort of concepts of, of UI that you may be accustomed to. And so it's a bit of a culture shock getting into panels. Um, it, uh, it, for the most part, uh, is, is something that you can control fairly well from the UI, but at some point you will need to get into template code, and then it's a matter of uh, knowing where to dig in. Uh, it gets complicated uh, after you reach that, that particular threshold. Um, there's also, uh, there's not a slide for this, there's another sort of method, especially in Drupal 8, for, for chunks, which is uh, there are image widgets now that are incorporated into CK Editor. I don't know if you've seen this, but you can now go into your CK Editor widget and uh, and hit the image button, and you get a Drupalish sort of image uh, widget within the blob, a way of getting a chunk in the blob. I don't know about you, a chunk in the blob to me still sounds like a blob. I think a fruitcake is still a blob. Uh, we're trying to get away from from that concept entirely altogether and just have the chunks without the blob. So. Uh, fields, templates, fields display speed, panels without fields. Yeah, none of these, none of these really work. Um, none of these are sort of uh, letting us accomplish full independence from the blob. None of these are, I think, really extremely like dead simple for non-coders and laymen who just want to get in and create their content. These are more complicated for them to, to sort of maintain. So, enter paragraphs. Yay! <laughs> All right, thank you guys for coming. This is a great, <laughs> great talk. I joined in. Uh... <laughs> yeah, so, so paragraphs, I, this is my, my sort of personal definition. It really lets site builders weave together their content in a, a really interesting way to make beautiful pages that are clean, ordered, XML friendly. Uh, so it's easily accessible by, you know, if you have a mobile app that needs to access your content through JSON, this is it. Uh, if you are a person who doesn't, you know, just doesn't know much about code, you can still jump in and weave together. So it's beautiful. It's good for people. You know, a designer can come to a content creator and say, "Here's what I want to see," and they have a, you know, much more likely chance of actually being able to do it and create something that's really beautiful. And then XML friendly means it's really good for computers. So it's good for your SEO. It's good for again, if you're using it for mobile browsers or if you're using RSS or whatever. If it's being accessed by a computer, getting away from blobs is pretty huge. So, um, paragraphs, uh, the, the concept of a paragraph is that you can use it pretty much as a drop-in replacement for the body field. So if you imagine for a second that you have uh, the node, so uh, something that is containing your node, it's got the node title at the top of it, maybe you've put in a field for the image and that just sits at the top of the, of the node, and then you've got uh, a bit of body field. So this is your blob, it's got uh, uh, an amalgamation of text and markup. And uh, it is what it is. And, and real, real quick, if you are totally a beginner to Drupal and you don't really know what the word node means, in this case, we're really just referring to any content, <coughs> any content type. Piece of content. Piece yes. of content. Mm -hmm. uh, and this piece of content formerly had a body field, but we're going to kill that. Whoosh. And replace the body field with now a paragraphs field. A paragraphs field uh, can contain any number of individual paragraphs inside of it. So uh, any number of individual paragraphs, there are many paragraph types that you can create and you can mix and match paragraph types. Uh, each paragraph type can have a different set of fields in it so that a different type of paragraph might be used for a different kind of purpose inside your paragraph field. So some examples of that might be, you might have a text paragraph because still you're, you're mostly trying to get uh, the, the language of your, of your body across. But you might also have a pull quote, which is text, but formatted in a way that makes it uh, nice for the page and emphasizes a certain point that you're trying to make. You might also have an image paragraph. So 
uh, an image paragraph would be an image that you could mix and match and drop into your body at a particular point in the body rather than having it stuck at the very top of your content type. Uh, you might even have a video paragraph. So a video paragraph can have a video node on it or a video field on it where you can put in the URL of a YouTube or a Vimeo link or upload your own video media and insert that between any one of these other paragraphs. So uh, examples like these four types of paragraphs are, like, are what I like to call content paragraphs because they are bits of content. They sort of, uh, uh, you can imagine them as something that might replace um, a structure or a paragraph inside a body field instead. There are, um, the content paragraphs to me are opposed to a different category which encompasses things like an aside, which is um, something similar to just like an inset in your body that might call out some, some piece of content that you want to talk about. Uh, a sidebar in a, in a magazine would be an example of an aside. Uh, an accordion, which is something that uh, that can expand when you click on the title of it. Um, or a, an instance where you might want to be able to split um, your, your body content into two columns and put some uh, content in the left side and some content on the right side. These uh, types of paragraphs uh, I like to refer, refer to as layout paragraphs because they're uh, bits of structure that you can have uh, that, that determine sort of the, the, the spatial relationship of content on your page. Um, there's also a different kind of paragraph that, uh, that uh, the example that, that we have here is called a pony. Uh, you're asking me what a pony is. A pony is, uh, is, is a small horse. Uh, <laughs> a pony is something that is very special. A pony is something unique to the world. It's not like a content paragraph or a layout paragraph, but it might be a hybrid of the two of them. It's something that, uh, that maybe fits a, sp a particular use case for the site that you're building, for the client that you have. Uh, and we try to avoid things that are special cases like ponies as much as possible because we want to reuse as much as possible the generic uh, paragraph types to create the, the beautiful structured content that we want. But it is possible to create special cases um, that fulfill very specific needs. Yeah? What about the unicorn? The unicorn is, I would say, a variant of the pony. And uh, if you can create a pony paragraph, you can probably create some sort of style that turns it into a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> I think a really important takeaway from this, though, is that even though these are examples that we've listed, you can create as many of whatever type of paragraphs that you want. We're simply showing you some examples and categorizing them because that's how we can organize them in our head. That's right. You might have different types of content paragraphs depending on the site that you're working on. Um, the, uh, the, the choice is up to you. Imagination's the limit. Also Drupal, but mostly your imagination. <laughs> So uh, paragraphs can be as simple as needed. This is the example from before, and let's whoosh out the body field again. Uh, but let's replace it now with a series of paragraphs. So instead of the body field, now I have these distinct paragraph entities. So I have a text paragraph, a pull quote, another text paragraph, and then uh, a two-column paragraph. So you can see that instead of one boring list of text and maybe a blob of HTML, now I've got separate things that I can manage independently from each other, but it creates a, a more beautiful and a, a, more, uh, a more meaningful um, tapestry of content. So we can also, uh, in this case, because we're using paragraphs, we don't need that top field that, uh, that just contained maybe the image that we had at the top of the page. Because we have the flexibility now to put images wherever we want in the flow of our content, we can replace that and create an image paragraph instead. Uh, and because these are distinct, separate entities that comprise your content, you can change the order of them on the fly as you please. So if I don't like where that two-column paragraph is, and I think that that text paragraph needs to go underneath it, I just move it. If I uh, decide that I don't want the image paragraph at the top of my content, but I want it rather sort of inset down into the, the content a little more, I just move it and start with a pull quote. No reason you can't do that. Uh, additionally, uh, because each of those paragraphs are separate entities, you can control with CSS code how they respond when you move between and across different breakpoints. So if you imagine that the box on the left contains um, somebody viewing it on an iPad, somebody or a tablet, and, so, and the, the box on the right is somebody viewing it on their, on their narrow mobile device, you can still construct uh, beautiful layouts using paragraphs that, uh, that respond well and maintain the, the flow of content, but, uh, but work across the page as you move the page down into to lower breakpoints.
Paragraphs uh, okay. can even nest other paragraphs. Paragraphs can be containers for other paragraph types. So if you see here, I've got what, what I would call two layout paragraphs on this page. And the layout paragraphs you might configure to just contain text, uh, but you don't have to. You can configure them to contain other paragraphs. So uh, whereas I have an aside here, uh, the content of that aside might be a text and then an image paragraph underneath it and then maybe ending with a pull quote. The two column paragraph, each of those columns, they don't have to be just text. I can decide that uh, I want those to be paragraphs of images and text, images and text. Uh, that, uh, the, the, there, there's no limitations. I would encourage you to enforce some limitations. Uh, so I talked about the distinction between content paragraphs and layout paragraphs. In order to keep yourself sane and, stop, and not nest too far, I would suggest that the things that you define as layout paragraphs should only contain things that are content paragraphs. It's relatively meaningless to have uh, an aside inside an aside, or an aside inside a two-column paragraph. You are, are mixing layouts to an extent that maybe uh, will get you in trouble down the road. Um, and uh, additionally, you probably, shouldn't, you probably don't necessarily want to nest layout paragraphs inside content paragraphs for a lot of the same reason. But um, the distinction between content paragraphs and layout paragraphs might save you some headaches down the road. All right, so back to our scenario. We're, we're really wanting to create this sort of two-column layout uh, directly within the, not body, but within the node. Someone, you know, could come up and, and create this, you know, in an easy sort of way. So we're going to use paragraphs. Uh, we are, uh, we have a sandbox, and just, just Drupal 8, just kind of vanilla standard Drupal 8, uh, and we added just these two modules, the paragraphs module, and it's one and only requirement, the entity reference revisions module. Now, even though we're doing this in Drupal 8, uh, this is Except for the UI changes that are inherent in Drupal 8, it's pretty much the same process in Drupal 7 as well. So no big deal. I, I personally have a little bit more experience in Drupal 7 than Drupal 8 for this, but it, okay. works, it works the same. So let's just jump right in. So we've added those modules. We've enabled them. Uh, we can then go up to manage and structure, and, and we have the paragraph types. Right now, these are blank. We don't have any paragraph types defined yet. Um, so we're going to start just by setting up some of our basic ones, the, the content ones that, that Les mentioned. So I went ahead and created a, type, uh, a text type, a uh, paragraph type called text. Um, and, and I went and I just called it text, you know, pretty straightforward. Um, kind of like a content type if you're used to adding fields or managing display. For that, it's exactly the same. I just go into manage fields and I can add a new text field into my text type. Uh, in this case, it's going to be the only field it has, because that's, that's what a text uh, type is going to be used for. So I define that, and then I just jumped ahead a little bit. I've added the other, you know, two of these other ones. I've added a pull quote and a image uh, paragraph type as well. Um, so now that we have a few of the, the content that we can actually start you know, using on our site, uh, I also wanted to add the two column uh, type that, that Les had talked about as being a sort of layout type. So I followed the same process. I went and added a new type. I typed in the name of the type. Uh, and then I went into manage fields. By default, you know, there are no fields there. So I went and said add a field. And instead of choosing like a text field or choosing an image field or something like that, in this case, I want to nest. Uh, I think that I can add a lot of flexibility, give flexibility to my content creators by letting them choose what sort of paragraphs appear in the two columns. So in this case, I'm going to say add a new field paragraph. Uh, and this is a minor note, but for anyone who's listening later, perhaps, uh, it's really important as you're going through this, there's going to be two paragraph, like when, when you look through the field types, there's going to be two of them that say paragraph. You want to look for the one that's under reference revisions. Um, what is the other one called? Uh, the other one is just under references, I believe. References. It's the, the core reference field, but that won't do. Yeah, it won't do what you're looking for. So you want to get go into the reference revisions uh, group and then choose paragraph from there. Uh, and you type in a label for that. Uh, once you get to the field configuration, uh, at the bottom you can choose all of the paragraph types that you want to be able to be added into this paragraph field. So we, in this case, want to add the, the content ones that we added. So we'll say image, pull quote, text. Looks good. So we'll click save. Uh, and then we want to add two of these. Because remember, we have a, a two column layout. We have the left column and we have the right column. So I went ahead and did the same thing twice. I added two paragraph fields, one for first column and one for second column. Uh, once we have our two columns created in the paragraphs, 
Uh, the next thing we have to do is just go to our basic page. So we, we go into our manage, structure, content types page, uh, and then we see in manage fields that right now we just have the body field. Uh, as Les said, we don't really want the body field. We're going to replace that with paragraphs. So I went ahead and deleted the body field and added a brand new field. And it looks just like the, the one we did before. We'll choose paragraphs. We'll choose two column from the configuration for, for paragraph type uh, because we want to add the two column type that we added just a moment ago. We'll click Save Settings. And then when we go to create a new basic page, it's pretty simple. Like someone will, will, will create a basic page and it'll have title, and then we'll have columns to, it says currently no paragraphs have been added yet, so we'll say add two columns. And this is what it looks like. Uh, right now the default option right here is add image, but if you click the little drop tab arrow thing, uh, you'll see that you can choose from any of the other paragraph types that we selected. So as your site grows, this can be you know, highly configurable. You can add as many other types as you want. And then, uh, so we have that there. Let's go ahead and add, we're gonna add an image. We're gonna add a text field. So we have our image. We uploaded the, the Drupalicon. Uh, we put in the alternate text. We also added a, a paragraph type of, of text for the, the other part. Uh, in this case, for the sake of the example and keeping it really simple, I did it all in a text field for both the heading and the other one. Uh, technically, that's probably a blob. Probably I, I shouldn't do that. So in your case, you would add just another text field for the heading and it would go in there. Um, maybe, I don't know. I think that, uh, that you, can, you can consider that to be just one single element of text. I don't think you have to take paragraphs uh, literally, that every paragraph of text is a, is a different paragraph. Well, I was thinking of a heading, it might be distinct. But that could be, yeah. You might have not. a heading paragraph, in fact. Yeah. Yes. I, mean, I, I think one option would be to define a um, format that's more restrictive than the traditional filter text, uh, so sort of a paragraph text that, that allows um, M tags, allows bold tags, mm -hmm. um, but doesn't allow um, paragraph tags. Um, and that might be a good thing to use for. for actual paragraphs, text paragraphs. Yeah, well certainly I, I didn't consider that, but certainly restricting the, the format so that you know like there's no images maybe in your in your text mm -hmm. paragraph. Yeah. Uh, and, and other th tables and things like that that you really don't want to be in there. That yeah that would help keep it more pure. Yeah de blobify. Yes. Right. <laughs> Trademark. <laughs> so, so here we go, so we've set up one column, we'll just do that again for the other column, we'll click save, and this is what we look like, or this, this is what we have so far. So we have this, but you know, if you've created content types, you've added fields and things like that, in, in any version of Drupal, you know that when you first do it, you always have the, the labels. You have labels on every single field, and you have to go into manage display and say no label or label above or whatever. Uh, in this case, we really don't want any of the labels. We don't want to see them. So we go into the content type, remove the label for the paragraph field. We go into the paragraph types, remove the label for the two column, remove the label for you know, image and for text. Uh, and once we do that, we end up with a much nicer looking layout. So at this point, uh, it's still not two columns, right? But what we've done is set up a structure that makes it extremely easy for someone who does know a little bit of CSS and has access to the theme to set up and say a two column layout paragraph type will always have two columns. It will always have you know, a left and a right, it'll always be floated and it'll always have width and all that stuff and it'll degrade nicely for mobile and tablet and all that stuff. It's very predictable markup uh, once you have that structure set up. So it's easy to just say, okay, well, you know, we're not gonna be setting up these layouts up all the time we're just going to add in a little bit of CSS, we'll float it left, float it right, and maybe I wouldn't do it just like this either, but you know, we put this into the theme, and then we have our example. Uh, the, the key here is that you still have to add a little bit of code to make things kind of position the way you want, or maybe add a little bit of JavaScript or jQuery to make you know, the accordion work, or things like that. But once you have it set up, it is reusable. You know exactly what the markup is going to be, it's very predictable, and it degrades. Exactly. Um, so, uh, when you are thinking about creating your paragraphs and, and sketching out what kind of paragraphs that you want to make, again, I think it's, it's important for you to think about how can I create paragraph types that are generic enough to be flexible across all the different types of content that my, uh, my client or my, my sale builders or my, my editors want to make um, without 
breaking uh, their brains with complexity and nesting. Um, so uh, a couple things there would be um, try to limit yourself to, to one level of nesting. Um, try to think about what uh, what you might need to be able to build that's beyond what just the, the, the mock-ups that you have or the designs that you have. You um, you uh, uh, might want to think about um, if, uh, if I have a two-column paragraph, it's entirely possible that in the future somebody might ask me for a three-column paragraph, and maybe you want to think about how can I architect my paragraph types to make arbitrary numbers of columns uh, that, that each contain their own paragraph instances. Um, you want to try to make your solutions reusable so that um, you want to avoid ponies as much as possible. Like, a pony is a separate distinct thing, but you can't clone a pony, at least not yet. Um, you uh, so so the more that you can think about um, the layouts that you can construct by by stitching together layout and content paragraphs, I think the uh, the the more um, the happier your editors will be going forward, and the happier you will be. Um. All right, so uh, there are several modules you can tie in. Uh, a lot of these are, are still kind of behind the curve; they're not up to date with Drupal eight yet, but. Uh, a couple of paragraph modules that are recommended on the actual paragraph module page uh, that I like to use are paragraph ID, which will add in unique identifiers. Uh, I think classes in, in Drupal 7 that will uniquely identify every single paragraph that you add to the page. That can be helpful if you have a special case that you need to, to style it in a particular way. And then classy paragraphs is a module I like to add that will let me add in a select box into any paragraph to say, uh, how should this one be unique from any other? So you could say, uh, Sometimes I've added one that would say, you know, float left or float right, or align left or line right. So you can align images to the left or the right of any sort of text paragraphs you have. Or this needs to be a special call-out box, or this needs to have special, um, you know, borders, or something like that. It, it lets you and the content creator easily select the classes uh, that you've predefined that are already tied to styles, and it's, it's just much easier to have that control. Do you know about uh, the Drupal 8 status of, of these two at all? I haven't heard. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so the, those are modules that, that directly tie into what Paragraphs does. There are also any field module that you can find on Drupal.org uh, is potentially useful in, uh, in Paragraphs. That's one of the reasons why, why Paragraphs is such a lovely solution is that it's entities and it's fields, um, the same concepts that underlie all of Drupal Core, so that the tools that are built for, for Drupal Core without even thinking about Paragraphs, they're all potentially useful here. Um, so, for instance, in Drupal 7, there is a field called block reference, which is a field you can configure on a content type or an MD type that, uh, that allows you to embed a block into your page. The reason why that's useful is that paragraphs aren't really reusable across different pages. Um, you, the, they're not the, meant to be. The content that you've The created. content of paragraphs, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. So, like, if I have a, yeah, so, so, um, but blocks are reusable. Uh, blocks are meant to be to be placed in, in several different page places in your layout, and so um, it's useful to be able to, to like have a block that has a certain bit of content, and then maybe um, include that block in several different pages. Uh, if you want to do that with paragraphs, you can do that by maybe creating a block paragraph, which is a content paragraph, mm -hmm. putting in a block reference field, and then referring to the one block that you want to be um, included on in every paragraph layout. Um, that uh, there, there's some work on a Drupal 8 port of that. I think that it's it's progressing on GitHub. Um, still working on that. There's some issues to work out. Um, another example that that is uh, particularly useful, I think, is something called View Field, which is a field module. It create, it's, it allows you to create a field for a content type where you can embed any view that's in your system. Um, you can uh, so, so uh, the ability to just say that that I want a view to appear in the the flow of my body content in between these two paragraphs wherever I want to put it is an extremely powerful thing and when you think about the implications of what that means that you can do that uh, that could blow your mind so so handle with care. Um, there are any number of uh, solutions for for um, getting videos into your into your body content as well. There are field modules where you just sort of paste in the URL of a YouTube uh, video or a Vimeo video, and that will format it as a playable video on the website. Uh, Media module has a bunch of components for it, so being able to upload video directly to your server and serve it from from your server or serve it from a CDN. Um, the point is that any of those modules would work perfectly well for creating perhaps a, a video content paragraph type as well. Um, outside of, of the field modules, there's something that also I found useful. Uh, there's a module called View Mode Selector. It's in both D7 and D8, and um, <coughs> View Mode Selector provides uh, a field type that allows you to determine which display mode of a particular entity that you want to use. 
Um, so that for each particular paragraph type, you might define three or four different display modes that vary how that gets displayed, and uh, and you can apply those independently of other paragraphs. It's a little uh, it's a little weird to set up from the user interface, but it adds a lot of flexibility to what you might uh, want to build into your paragraphs. So as you're thinking about paragraphs and uh, how you might make them uh, more reusable in the future, the ability to to seek to like different view modes for a paragraph could be uh, could be quite useful. Um, there's also the field groups module. Uh, David and I actually both use field groups module to help us organize the content of our, our edit forms. Uh, we use them in, in slightly different ways. Um, so field groups, first of all, is, is a, a module that allows you to define groupings of fields on your edit form or on uh, the display of your piece of content in order to sort of keep them a little more organized. Uh, so uh, the way I use it, I like to um, create tab groups and put my paragraph implementation into a single tab, so that's the only thing in a vertical tab. And then um, that vertical tab flows into the, uh, in Drupal 7 it flows into the vertical tab interface that you normally have on, uh, on your edit forms, and it becomes just one of those tabs. So that um, the only thing that I am editing, the only thing that, that, uh, that is in the context of, of my brain at that point when I'm on that tab is that I'm editing paragraphs. I'm not worried about other fields or the title or other settings on the page. Um, that's useful because uh, if you have a lot of paragraphs on the page, that gets to be a very, very long form. So just keeping it um, organized in context and, and, that, and having that being the only thing visible is, is helpful. Um, but yeah. Yeah, and, and I, I think your example is a little bit more like what I've seen uh, some WordPress implementations do, where you're separating the different fields by different tabs. So it's easy to, you see everything on one page, you enter the title and whatever other fields, you click paragraphs and add all the paragraphs and you click the next tab and you publish it and things like that. Yeah, the way that I've been using field groups is actually, um, whenever you have nested paragraphs, sometimes you can, you can get the page very, very long and it's complicated to see sometimes which group of, uh, which layout you know, paragraph that you're actually working in. So if we have two columns like we had a moment ago, you know, we had a, an image and a text field, and it filled up most of the page just with the image and the text field, with all the field configuration for that. So I like to put a field group around, uh, basically inside of every uh, every paragraph field on a every nested paragraph field. For example, uh, again with the two columns, I would have put those two paragraph fields inside of a group so that it's a field set. So I'd see. Uh, left column, right column as a field set. If I want to look to see what's in the left column, I click the field set and it drops it down and I see all of the fields within that one layout. Um, otherwise, I have to scroll through and I have to like kind of hunt and peck and find where that particular one is and it makes it kind of cluttered. So simply making those already condensed field sets just makes it a lot easier for people to find what they're looking for. Yeah. You could combine those two approaches, couldn't you? And so you would mm -hmm. have your different tabs and within the tabs you could have collapsed sections like yeah. Les was saying that the, the the tab where you're actually entering all of your paragraphs could be really long if you could those yeah, that's no, exactly definitely. Right. Yeah, I, I think we, we, we both agreed when we were kind of outlining our notes that we both really liked field groups, but it wasn't until we were talking about the slide that we realized we were using them in pretty different ways. But you're absolutely right. We could combine these and probably have an even better yeah. implementation. Yeah, we're totally doing that now. <laughs> <laughs> so next time you go through the presentation, give us some screenshots of that. <laughs> Okay. No, that's not a bad idea. Actually, that's a, that's a great idea. Yeah. 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 Sorry. That's a that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, another thing that I like to do is uh, the uh, the HTML, the actual structure of paragraphs, gets really really complicated because you're nesting um, entities within fields within entities. Uh, the the default Drupal markup that you get for fields is really um, is really verbose. And uh, it's really helpful uh, to, to get rid of some extraneous markup that you maybe don't need. Um, in Drupal 8, the, the way that you would approach that would be uh, a field dash dash and then the type of field dot html dot twig, putting that into your, uh, into your theme in your templates folder. Um, and that would affect all of the paragraph field types um, throughout your theme. Um, to get an example of, of what I'm looking at, this is sort of um, more of a, this is, this is what, what you could get out of the, uh, the default markup. Uh, without changing anything in your field paragraph. So we've got, uh, and this is, this is the classes of what I might look if I'm inspecting the element in, in, my, uh, in my Chrome Inspector or my Fire Bug. Uh, so the very top level container is my content type, my, my page node. 
Uh, inside the page note, I've got my field that contains layout paragraphs, or, or just paragraphs in general. Um, and then because it's a multiple, uh, multiple item field, it's got multiple cardinality, it's got a div inside of it called field items. Uh, field items contains a, a div called field item for every individual item that is in my field. Inside field item is the actual content of that particular uh, item uh, or instance of that field, and that is a single paragraph type. In, in our example, it's our two column paragraph. Uh, this is its own separate entity, so we repeat the same, uh, the same process again for the fields that are inside of that. So for the first column paragraph field, we've got our field name, first column, field items again, and a field item, and then finally we've actually got the image paragraph that we put inside that first column. And even that has its own structure underneath it, because this too is also an entity, and it's got more fields and more nesting underneath of it. Uh, and because we have other items in this first column, we've got our field item with text. And uh, for the second column, we also have the same thing. We've got uh, field items with images and text. This, um, this can be a real pain in the neck, especially if you are using descendant CSS selectors or um, if you're using um, neighbor selectors to try to, to get nuanced uh, theming of, of particular images type or, or particular paragraphs within the context of other paragraphs. Um, what I like to do and what I suggest doing is that you identify, and that's really hard to see on the uh, projector. Oh, wow. Yeah, it looks a lot better on the screen. It's, 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 check it's, it out. It's missing red or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The, uh, the parts of, of the structure that, that are helpful to get rid of, uh, I think, are getting rid of the field items container and the field item container. Uh, both of these have uses. They're, they have uses in the generic sense of Drupal where Drupal has no idea what the content of the field might be, and so it makes sense to wrap it in some way so that uh, it, in case you've got just, just generic text in, in here, just if you didn't have an entity, you might want to make sure that it's wrapped in some sort of block level element so it doesn't uh, flow in line into each other. But for our purposes, we don't really need these containers. We already, oh, since we're embedding other entities, they're already kind of self-contained. So anywhere where we see this, uh, this pattern, we just want to kind of get rid of it. So if we were to remove just all of those field item containers out of our field templates, we would get markup that looked more like this. So we'd still have our container content type node. It still has a field container in it, but then it goes immediately into the paragraphs that are in that field. So we've got our two column layout per uh, paragraph. That also has its own paragraph uh, field. So we've got the first column paragraph. And then each paragraph type just um, are neighbors of each other underneath that. This uh, is a lot more readable. It's also a lot easier to select if you are writing CSS for this kind of structure. But I, I do also want to be really clear, though, that if, if you, this is kind of over your head. If you're not a themer, if you came here to learn more about paragraphs as the module, this is not, not overkill, but it is something that really makes themers really happy. But if you're a content creator, you, it doesn't matter. Like it really, it, It's not a huge deal. Yeah. I think you can do much the same thing with the fences module based yeah. on these uh -huh. I don't know what the status of fences is for DA, but yeah, fences is a module that that sort of does it does it take over or override the the field template system, or the the field templates yeah, that they it, put. It allows in. you to. It's, it, it gives you options for each field that you configure. To to collapse out uh, some of the div itis mm -hmm. in there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's a very similar response. Um, you can uh, I think either way is it's perfectly valid. But uh, yeah. Yep. And and because it's a template, you can create these for different conditions and. You know, you can add in That's extra right. stuff. Uh, we, we don't have an example here for this, but one ex one reason why I went into the, the template to add it is because I had situations where I wanted to be able to create anchors to paragraphs that I had created, but they don't come with IDs by default. I know there are other ways to do it, but I found it really helpful to go into the template and create a unique ID for every paragraph in addition to the other uh, classes that are already there. So it's easy then to use anchors to jump down or jump around to various paragraphs. Sure. And uh, paragraphs is pretty, uh, it's pretty young in Drupal 8, so I mean, there's still a lot of room for, for features to be, to be added into it. I mean, hopefully we'd, we'd see some of, some of these same um, con uh, helpful conceits added in. Anyway. Yeah, so, so we're kind of wrapping up. Uh, before you go, I, there's some announcements we just need to make. So there's a uh, sprint tomorrow across the street, kind of over where the, is it where the game night was? In that, yeah, that, it's in that building. Where the, um, Yes, I don't know which room it's in because it's a large building, but mm -hmm. that's the building. Cool. Uh, and 
And we do have slides available. These are available online at bit.ly slash using dash paragraphs. Um, I also tweeted it just a few minutes before our session. So if you look up David Needham on Twitter, they're there too. Uh, and then please rate this talk. It's really helpful for the, the organizers of the camp to be able to see which sessions were actually really good and for us to get feedback. So there's a bit.ly link for that too. If you have the slides, you have that as well. Um, and you know, we consider feedback to be really important to us right now, um, particularly because we are kind of proud to announce that we are going to New Orleans. Uh, this session was accepted to be presented at DrupalCon in New Orleans. So, thank you. Uh, if you have feedback, like adding the example um, that, that, that you made a suggestion for a little bit ago, that, that's perfect. That, I think we will definitely add that, the screenshots for the, the nesting of the, uh, the groupings. Um, if you yeah. guys have other feedback, um, you know, maybe come up afterwards real quick or shoot us an email or <coughs> tweet at us or wh whatever is easiest for you. Find us in the hallway. Yeah, you don't have to be nice about it. Be mean. I like it. Do it. Any, any, yeah, any feedback. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And with that, we hope you enjoyed the session today. Thank you very much. Oh, we have some time for questions. We do, yeah. How difficult is it to migrate content into paragraphs or migrate content out of paragraphs? I haven't tried migrating content out of paragraphs. Um, I'm, for migrating into paragraphs, I've also only done that in Drupal 7. It's, uh, it's not terrible. Uh, there, there is a, a migrate handler, at least in Drupal 7, to, to sort of do it. So, so it's, it's entirely possible to do. Um, I've, I've actually done um, a more simple uh, uh, I've done a simple version of it where um, I, I actually created a body field as an intermediary destination for for um, for just like a, a river of text because a lot of your source uh, material may not be migratable particularly. You do, you're mig if you're migrating blobs, there's not really an easy way to uh, programmatically break that up into chunks. So what what I've done in the past is have that migrate into a body field and then figure out after the fact or let the, the, the content creator then go in and figure out how to turn that body field into paragraphs. Because a lot of times that work is, is manual work and we, we don't want to leave the, the user with blobs that are now just paragraph blobs. That really defeats the purpose. Um, okay. hmm? So just to clarify, if you have like a longer, long article and you're trying to uh, put you know, embedded stuff and mixing it in with that, you're essentially breaking a long article into multiple text paragraphs? Um, yeah, I would say that's a good, a, good, a good example of it. So multiple text paragraphs that are interspersed with maybe um, layout paragraphs that add a little bit of syntactical um, you know, sugar to your, uh, to your layout. Um, so yeah, you can consider it as, as not a body field, but as a progression of paragraph entities that, that build your content. As a follow-up question, would you say that a unicorn is a pony that's good at tooting its own horn? Um, are you, uh, we'll talk about this later, Mark. I think you might be, I think you might be having an episode again. Um. So, so I, I, there was a question, I was talking to someone else about this before the session, and they had a question, they're not here now, so I'm going to ask the question of us, because I think it's a good question. So, so someone, uh, I was describing this to them, and they said, wow, that sounds an awful lot like field collections. Oh, yes. I really hate field collections because they're not entities and it's blah, blah, blah. So, No, I, I also dislike field collections, but mostly because uh, when I was working in field collections, uh, I found it to be extremely hard to, to get my head around fields versus field collections in, in, the, in the theming layer. I got collisions all the time, and, and like it, it really killed. But mainly, it's that uh, what you put in a field collection is the same thing all over and over again. You can't mix and match types of field collections. Mm -hmm. um, so, so uh, it's it's not nearly as flexible for for the purpose of replacing the body field. Right, and and it might seem similar because this is actually a fork of field collections. Like yeah. the started is the same, and they they said we can do better, and so I think they did. Yeah, kudos. Have you ever run into the problem where content creator sees paragraphs and instead of using it as it's designed, they say, oh, I'm instead of pressing return, I'm just going to add another paragraph. So is there a way to rename it to something a little bit more intuitive? Than, I mean, I'm thinking of yeah. some of the content creators that I've dealt with. And 
I don't have a, a good naming suggestion. Naming things is one of the three hard things in, in computer science. Um, but you can't. You don't have to call it paragraphs. Okay. You can call your field any any label that you want for the paragraph field name. You can call it. And I think in the configuration of it, you don't have to have, when it when uh, you can give it a different name internally for okay. what that thing is. So sometimes I've called it section instead. All right. That, um, that depending on what kind of thing uh, that I'm building out using paragraphs. Chunk, but not blob, right? Yeah. So you could label it. Yeah, chunk. Just call it chunk. That'll not confuse anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I noticed when you were going through and adding a basic page, you, you know, pick two columns and then it would show up. Is there a way to have a certain paragraph type show up by default for a content editor so they're not placing things that are all messed up and not the way that it's supposed to be? Uh, there is a module uh, listed on the paragraphs module that I tried to use and could not get to work that is supposed to do that. It, it's supposed to create pre-existing configurations of paragraph, gr like groupings of paragraphs Almost that you like can reuse. Kind of yeah, like a reusable, yeah. I, I tried the module, I couldn't get it to work. Uh, in theory it's possible, but I'm still looking for something. Um, so I don't know. Right. Haven't tried it. Maybe we should use a field collection with a paragraph <laughs> inside of it with a <laughs> oh, I thought. Oh, uh, I thought you were going to hit me. A yeah. <laughs> uh, question over there. Yeah. Uh, is there an easy way to export uh, your configuration of paragraphs as far as the fields and the details? Uh, the use case would be uh, we have, let's say, we have a large amount of content on our production line, but we want to add new paragraph types, but we want to be able to theme them and get them ready before we do that. Sure. Yeah, I haven't used it with. Is, is it a uh, um, um, feature featureable? Yeah, it's absolutely featureable because they are entity types, and entity types are featureable the same way as other entity types. What I have done in Drupal seven, because features is mostly relevant for for Drupal seven, I guess in, in Drupal eight, um, you have to rethink this maybe a little bit. In Drupal seven, I um, I've created uh, an, uh, a feature that that is that has the express purpose of controlling or containing paragraph entities. Um, and and in that feature module, I might be able to add configuration or controls or or preprocessing for for those paragraphs. But then um, I don't uh, put in the the fields that consume those paragraphs. That goes in, into separate features depending on how you're organizing it. So I, I'm a little worried about your your comment that it started as a fork of field collection because I hate field collection so much. <laughs> um, so so is, is it using the, the same underlying structure of field collection that each paragraph type is an entity, and and then um, what has it done differently under the hood that that makes it better than field collection and I shouldn't hate it so much. Um, so I have found it to be much less obstreperous working with it from a theming perspective. Um, the the naming conventions don't. So there 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 used to be. I used to come up with weird collisions between the name field collection and just things that are fields. Uh, I had a site where I had a content type called collection, for example. That was just uh, that was that was that was maddening. You did that, uh, that was uh, that was almost <laughs> rage quit territory. Uh, but. Um, under the hood, it does look a lot similar. There's a lot of the same code for, like, if you're programmatically creating paragraphs, then then you still have some of the similar sort of, like, set host entity type of, of conceits behind it. But a lot of that actually comes from entity API module in Drupal 7, uh, not necessarily from any uh, from field collections itself. Um, the, so structurally, it's still sort of like you, you get, you know, entities within entities contained in fields. And, and if you try to try to control that as much as you can using um, using trying to get rid of like the extra divs and stuff. But but still it's it's the data model from field collections. There's really not any, any good way around that, I don't think. It, I guess from from a very non technical perspective it, it works for me. Like I, I felt I I've used field collections for a long time and I felt like it, it kept not working. Yeah. And it was I don't know, it, it felt it felt really I felt it was it's constraining. It's yeah. it's definitely constraining. Like this is the only thing that that I can that can go in a field collection, and so it doesn't serve the same purpose. A field collection is is like I I want to I I want a listing of very particular combinations of of fields, and I want to be able to repeat that that combination a couple different times. But that is not the same thing as building body content. I want beautiful, diverse body content, and I want to be able to mix and match. And uh, you can't do that with field collections. All right, well, I guess that's it. Thank you all. <laughs>